Hey everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. If you want to create killer slow motion effect, transition between two actions, or even create a new animation from an existing one, discover everything you need to know about Blender 3.0 NLA Editor in this video. If you want a deeper look to Blender's animation tools, or if you want to learn animation from beginner to pro level, check out my live course on p2designacademy.com. Let's get started with the tutorial. Here is Trident, the character I will be using for this demonstration. He is currently in his T-pose. I will expand the timeline and open the Action Editor, which is under Dope Sheet. The Action Editor is a mode of the Dope Sheet. From there, clicking the Action Library icon, I can access all the actions stored in this Blender file. Among all these actions, I can find a walk and a run cycle. Both of these actions are on place meaning that there is no root motion of the character and it's like he's walking or running on a treadmill. Each of these animations are cycling once. I will open another panel and search for the NLA editor. And to keep it as clear as possible, I will click on the icon Show Selected Only. The NLA editor shows me the action that is currently being edited in the Action Editor, but I can't use it as an NLA strip. If I close the action from the editor, it will disappear. There are different ways you can create a new strip. You can open an action in the Action Editor and click the Push Down button in the Action Editor or in the NLA Editor. This will push down the action into a new strip. The strip is bound to an NLA track. You can delete the strip by selecting it and pressing X or select the NLA track and press X too. To load a new strip, you first need to create a new NLA track by pressing Shift A with the mouse cursor in the NLA column. Then you need to make sure that the NLA track is active by clicking on it, and in the timeline, you can press Shift A and add any action. It will create a new NLA strip that binds the action. If you unselect the NLA track and try to add another action, you will get an error message with Blender asking you to select an active track to add the action to. I can add a run cycle if I want, and Blender will play the current action as the playhead hit the strip the action is bound to. The same way you will edit video sequences. I will get rid of this second strip so that we can focus on the walk cycle. As I scrub through the timeline beyond the end of this walk cycle, you can see the character holding the pose. And if I go to the strip menu, you can see that the extrapolation mode is set to hold and it shows on the track with this transparent orange background. Switching to nothing, this background disappear and now my character get back into T-Pose as soon as we don't treat the strip anymore. The hold extrapolation mode will either hold the pose to be red or the last pose red. Selecting hold forward will only hold the last pose red. With your strip selected, if you press tab, you can see it get loaded in the action editor. You enter tweak mode. Basically, it allows you to edit the current action. From there, you can edit the pose of your character, whether in the action editor or in the graph editor, and it will update on your strip. This way, no need to open and close the action each time you need to edit it. Plus, it will keep the action synchronized both in the action editor and the NLA editor. If you offset the strip and enter tweak mode by pressing tab, it will also be offset in the graph editor or the action editor. It's way more comfortable than going back to the action editor, opening the action, then it's no longer synchronized with the NLA strip, since Blender creates some kind of temporary NLA track for it, while with tweak mode, the action gets offset in time to fit the position of the NLA track it's bound to. Strip manipulation is pretty straightforward. You can press G to move them, or hold left click and drag. It works the same as editing a 3D object. You can press Shift D to duplicate them. It will likely create a new NLA track. Press X to delete them. Press S and drag to scale them. 
the scaling is performed from the playhead. If I move the playhead at the beginning, the scaling goes to the right. Scaling the strip will change the time needed to play the action. So if you scale it up, your action will play in slow motion. Press Alt S to cancel the scaling. If we check the reversed option, our animation will be played backward. We'll talk about blending and influence later on when we are combining different actions. I don't understand what the cyclic strip time is made for, so if you know it, feel free to explain it in the comment section below. While it can be confusing, animated strip time is pretty easy. The value input reference the frame of the action loaded in the strip. My current walk cycle is 32 frames long. On frame 0, I will key the value 0. Now, as I scrub through the timeline, my character is no longer moving. Because the animated stream time value tells Blender to only read frame 0 of the action bound to the NLA strip. On frame 32, I will key the value 32. If I now expand my graph editor, you can see I have a new curve that is called NLA strip control. And its value goes from 0 to 32 on frame 0 to frame 32. By default, it doesn't have a linear interpolation, so we can see the animation easing in and out, slowing down and accelerating if you prefer. While if I select all the handles and press V and switch them to vector, I will have a linear interpolation, and so I will be playing the 32 frames of my action over 32 frames and the action will currently play at normal speed. If I want, I can add a new point on the curve pressing I, and as I'm editing the curve, you can see the character moving, and I can create a slow motion in the middle of my animation. If I offset the last point of my curve to frame 40, I can then select the strip and set its frame hand to 40. Now my walk is played over 40 frames and you can see it's slowing down and accelerating following the curve shape. If I push the curve down, it will even play the animation in reverse over those couple of frames. Let me show you another example that may better illustrate the power of this tool. In my empty NLA, I will load the action used in this animation. As I did previously, I will enable the animated strip time on frame 0, I will add the value of 0, and on frame 110, a value of 110, and key them. As I do so, I can see the curve in the graph editor, and I will switch both handles to vector. My animation currently plays normally, since I have a linear interpolation of a value of 1 per frame. With the curve selected, I will press I in the graph editor and add a couple of keys around the kicking motion. I will offset the last keys, switch both handle to vector. This way I still have a linear interpolation between the original keys and so my animation play at normal speed. But between the two new keys, there is a plateau and so the animation is playing slower. And so I get a slow motion. Then you can edit a bit the curve to get a better blending between the normal speed and the slow speed. And boom, you have your super slow motion effect in a few seconds. This is a fantastic tool to experiment with your animation and bring even more appeal. Let's now see how we can combine multiple actions. If I go down in the strip menu, I can see the action loaded, the walk. I can ask Blender to repeat the action. This is a good way to play a cycle without adding a cyclic modifier. Here we can find our playback scale. It's the same as when we are scaling the strip using S. Scaling it up will slow the motion. Scaling it down will accelerate the motion. I can split the strip with the Y key. The strip gets splitted where the playhead is. If the strip was repeated, Blender will now repeat the splitted strip which can look buggy. So if you want to split a strip and then continue on your cycle, let's say you want to begin your walk cycle from another pose than the initial one, I will press Shift A to add my walk cycle. I will split where I want it to start. And then I will simply add another walk cycle and repeat this one. 
I select the first strip, press Y to split it, select its first part, get rid of it, and now I can repeat the second strip, and my character will start his walk cycle from the contact pose, and then it will continue on cycling. Let's make a raw faction blending. I will add a new NLA track by pressing Shift A, and with this track selected, I will press Shift A and add my run cycle. By default, the track on top will override the track beneath. As I scrub throughout the timeline, as soon as I hit the run cycle clip, my character will run. And since by default the extrapolation mode is set to hold forward, my character will hold the last pose of the run cycle. If I set it to nothing, he will switch back to walk. Create a nice blending between the two animation. I will cut the run cycle strip when the character is reaching the passing pose, basically when one of his foot is planted in the ground. And with this selected, I will press Y to split the strip. Then I will scrub through my wall cycle and try to find the moment where the right foot is also in the passing pose, and I will adjust the run strip accordingly. From there, I will blend those two together. I will select my run strip and I will increase the blend in. The blend in value is the number of frames needed to transition into the run cycle strip. It's represented by a curve on top of the strip. This way you can quickly get a decent transition. Now it's up to you to play with the speed of the walk cycle, the speed of the run cycle, create multiple clips, blend between them to create something more realistic. Note that by default, the blending mode is set to replace, so my run action or my run strip replace the walk action. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. I will start with a fresh NLA track where I just have one walk cycle. I will add a new track. I will select my rig in pose mode. And on the scale of the root bone, I will insert a keyframe. I can see Blender has created a new action. I will push it down and it will be assigned to the selected NLA track. If I press tab with the strip selected, I will enter trick mode. This allows me to edit the current action in the graph editor or the action editor. I will push up the scale to 3. Since by default the blending mode is set to replace, this scale of 3 on the root bone from this new strip override the one from the walk cycle. You can solo an NLA track by simply clicking the little star icon. If I do so on the walk NLA track, Blender now ignores the other track and my root scale is back to one. If I set the blending mode to add, the current scale of three will be added on top of the scaling of one. And the scale result is four. If I enter trick mode by pressing tab and set the new scaling of the root bone to 0.5, since the blending is set to add, now the result of both strip is going to be 1.5. Multiply will output a result of 0.5, 1 multiply by 0.5, and subtract a result of 0.5, 1 minus 0.5. So it's pretty logical and might be useful for motion design, but for character animation, it's tricky. Because if you apply the same thing to rotation, location, etc., with all the relationship in your rig, everything is going to be funky. But there is another mode called the combine mode that mixes these different operations and can lead to nice result. Let's see how to use it. With my NLA track cleared, I will add a new empty NLA track on top of my walk cycle, and I will display the double-handed sword of my character. I now play the animation, doesn't look super realistic, as the sword look weightless. I'd like him to put the sword on his shoulder in a relaxed way. Since the hand will be contacting the sword that will be contacting the shoulder, it's easier for me to switch to inverse kinematic. If you want more information on how and when to use inverse and forward kinematics, check out my related video. 
a new analog track is selected, I will key the custom property that allows me to switch between FK and IK. The hand of my character is now stuck in the hair. I will make sure that the IK controller follows the torso root by enabling and keying the proper custom property. I can now push down the action and see the result as I play the animation. The blending mode is set to replace, so the new value of the custom properties that allow me to switch get replaced by the top strip. If I change the blending to combine, you can see that it doesn't work. The combine option proceeds with different type of blending at the same time. And for the custom properties, it's better to use replace. I will call this track IK Switch and I will create a new track where I will start animating my character, this time using the combined blending mode. So you may create a dedicated NLA track for your custom properties and then another track for your current animation. With this new track selected, I will key my hand controller. I will also key the shoulder, a bit of the torso root, a bit of the chest, etc. To offset the weight of the character on his right, where the sword is slightly bent in, basically revise his pose to make it look better. By default, the blending mode is set to replay, so it looks a bit weird, but if I switch to combine, now the new pose I created is combined with my walk cycle. So from there, I can enter twink mode on my revision track, key the controller I need to get a better result on my animation. You can quickly reposition the fingers, for example, you can reposition the shoulder, reposition the elbow. You can also use a space switching. If you're not familiar with space switching, check out my introduction to space switching video or check out my animation course Alive, where I will show you how to use these techniques step by step. The animation needs to be polished, but after a few minutes, I get to this result pretty easily and without modifying my initial work cycle. Now let's say the current action pleased you. You can select all your controllers, go to Pose, Animation, Bake, Action. You will enable only selected bones and visual keying, you will set the frame range to your animation loop and click OK. This will bake the current visual action of the different controllers. And now if I push the newly created action in the NLA and solo it, you can see my new walk cycle action called action.003 has been created. This is the end of this video. I hope you have a better insight on the NLA editor and I will see you very, very soon.